just really uh, proud of our guys. Showed a lot of grit. You know, we've had a tough stretch, you know, leading up into the bye week and we're able to kind of come together and pull together and find a way to be a good Navy football team. I was really proud of the way our, uh, our team leaders played. I mean, I thought EJ played really well. McGee, Rigby, Stoffel, uh, Sadie, all, our, all of our team leaders uh, did a good job of setting the tone of that game, I thought. And, you know, it's something that we could build off of. I mean, we weren't perfect by any means, you know. Uh, Got to find a way to eliminate the turnovers. You know, I think we did a, a pretty good job of eliminating negative plays by way of, you know, no penalties, no sacks, things like that. But the turnovers are something that we absolutely have to address, you know, and uh, you get that part of it fixed. But again, just really uh, proud of the way our team showed some grit, you know, pulled together and again, found a way to get a victory. Uh, as you all know, we're in a tough conference and, you know, uh, we got a tough team in South Florida. You know, we, we can't look at records for sure in this conference. I mean, they just scored 50 points on a very good Memphis team. So we got our hands full and excited to attack the week. But I will say, you know, dinner did taste a little bit better, you know, Saturday night and got a little bit of sleep. And, you know, our, our kids got some morale going right now that we're going to build off of. And I'm excited about that. So what questions you guys have for me? So you said the team wasn't perfect, but was Jordan McGee pretty close? To Jordan McGee. Now we played Jordan McGee was hell on wheels out there. I mean, 11 tackles, eight solos, you know, four TFLs and a sack. He was on fire, you know, um, had a damn near perfect football game. He really did. You know, he's been the most consistent football player on this football team that way. I mean, he's just really has elevated this game, the sense of maturity that he brings to his preparation. Is through the roof right now, and uh, you know he's absolutely the guy that we follow on game day. He's just, you know, so intent in getting the job done, and it's all about the team for him. So it's pretty awesome. How does your coaching mindset have to change from coming off that, you know, the way you play Navy versus you know, it's probably the rest of your games are going to be teams that were forty to forty at the score or something yeah. more. How does that change when you, you know, your approach on game day and having to think the game ahead of time? Yeah, you know, it's just, it's, it's always one game at a time, you know, and South Florida is the most important game for us right now. And they bring some things to the table that we have to prepare for. I mean, they're not a Navy offense for sure, <laughs> you know. Um, they're very different on defense than they were a year ago. Uh, only similar to Navy in a sense of how much pressure we're going to see from South Florida's defense, you know. So uh, there will be some carryover uh, for the offense only in a sense of, anticipating pressure and being able to try to find the indicators. Uh, EJ being able to find out where things are coming from to get us in the right protection. That way we have to be really locked in and, and laser-like focused that way. Um, but we're, we're dealing with a, a team that's going to put a bunch of athletes on the field, a lot of speed. And uh, you just have to take them one day at a time, one game at a time. Yeah, even though Navy's a bit of an outlier in that regard, is there anything that's sort of translatable from what, what Jordan did here? Yeah, well, the one thing that our defense was forced to do against Navy was have discipline with their eyes. I mean, they, they had no chance, no, 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 no opportunity whatsoever to, to sit there and look at something other than their keys within the scheme, okay? And with a dual threat quarterback that we're getting ready to face in South Florida, it's the same thing. We have to be disciplined with our eyes. And that's something that, you know, hasn't been very consistent for us leading up to Navy, I think we took a step in the right direction that way. You know, guys trusting what they see and triggering on the football. And in that respect, it just can't be Jordan's eyes. Like you said, I can't give you the game plan, but it's going to have to be, you know, depending on formation, we're going to have to have somebody accounted for that, for that quarterback every play. Stan, Amon had kind of a tough game with those two fumbles. Have you talked to him since then? Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, it's a tough go. Um, you know, one thing is it was great to see him get in the open field and create an explosive play, you know, and he was trying to cut it back and, you know, really didn't anticipate somebody behind him. You know, sometimes our players think they're faster than what they are. <laughs> and that, that is a joke. And I joke about him. I joke to him about that kind of a thing. But, you know, anytime you're cutting back into the teeth of the defense, you have to secure the football. And uh, this is going to be a tough lesson that he has to learn. And then 
you know, if you're going to be a temple tough football player, you have to get one and oh with your mindset. OK, you fumble the football. All right. Um, hey, we need you right now. Dante's down. So you got to go feel this punt, you know. And um, so I, I know he is capable of doing that. You know, um, he has showed me that he's been capable of doing that since I've been here. It has not been an easy go. I have not made it easy on Ahmad. You know, so I know he can he can do those things, and you know, and uh, in that moment he felt he let the team you know let the team down, you know, but uh, the team actually rallied behind him, and I think that's what helps him to overcome that and get ready for the next the next game. With uh, Joe Quest, what's kind of not allowing him to kind of you know pop on the field the last couple of weeks after you know he kind of had a good start to the first two yeah. games you plugged him in on. You know, Joe Quest is you know. Um, some of the things that show up in young running backs, the, the impatience behind the line of scrimmage, some of the misreads, you know, um, flinching at false daylight, uh, you know, not quite sure, you, you know, you may not, may or may not understand that piece of it, but uh, I think that shows up and, you know, he's still developing, you know, and you know, when you're playing against a defense that's moving the front quite a bit because they're bringing pressure and things are moving, you know, you can sit there and hesitate and think that the hold is there, but you have to be patient and take one more step, press it to the heels of the line of scrimmage to make the right read, you know. So I just think that this, this is a matter of, you know, him growing into the position, you know, maturing as he goes. I mean, we, we absolutely have the utmost confidence in, in Joe Quez. We know he's going to be one hell of a football player for us. And uh, it's just the, the things that we're going to have to, you know, live and learn with him and just go through the growing pains and, and, and keep our confidence level high for him. How about Sadie? It seems like in this role coming as the third guy where the defense might be a little bit hit up a little bit and he comes in running real hard and fresh. Is that a role that's really fitting? It, it, it's working for us and, and that's who Sadie is. You know, you, you soften the defense up and, and the one thing about Sadie that, you know, that Joe Quest will eventually grow into is Sadie is playing patient behind the line of scrimmage and he is running decisively um, making the right reads and you know putting his foot in the ground and getting vertical and and with the body type that he has as compact as he is you know he could pose a problem for people if you're trying to tackle him on the side there he's going to always fall forward that way you know so uh, that that can be a problem for defenses when you have that type of body type that is being that decisive that late in the ball game um, you know we, we definitely love that that formula. USF will obviously remember him. Um, yeah. Is there a temptation to like, yeah, it might be a chance to, you know, let's try to maybe feature Yeah, we're, gonna, we're, we're evaluating what, what South Florida presents us. Again, you know, that was a totally different defense a year ago than what we're going to face this year. And, um, you know, we would like to establish the run, you know, for sure. And, you know, we, we're very confident in, in all those backs. I mean, you know, Darvon is having a, a, a good season in spots, and, and so is Sadie. And I think it's a good complement of those three backs right now that come into the football game and complement each other in a lot of different ways. So um, we're counting on them. Stan, USF is giving up 37 points a game. They specifically bring a lot of pressure. Could you see the opportunities in terms of what you guys could do against them, or are you already having favorable matchups or things that you like when you're looking at the film? Yeah, you know, it's just. Um, you know, we have to play sound football, first of all, right? We, we got to make sure we put the right foot in the ground at the right time. You know, we can't fall step against all the movement we're going to see. Um, we're going we're gonna to do what we do best. You know, we're going to play into our strengths against uh, South Florida. Um, to sit there and say that there are any favorable matchups, um, they're moving around so much that it's hard to really sit there and narrow on you know, narrow in on one guy on that defense and say that, hey, that's going to be the matchup that we're going to be able to create all game long. That's just not a reality, you know, but um, we're, we're going to do what we do best, you know, and, and uh, we got to block them. You know, that's that's the number one thing we have to do both in the run game and in the in the pass game. We got to make sure that we have a hat on the hat to give ourselves a chance. Melvin's, uh, he's day to day, you know, he, he, he uh, took a, an injury to the shoulder, a hit to the shoulder and injured it pretty good. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to wait to see um, if he's going to be game ready, but it's going to be a decision that goes later in the week for us. You seem pleased with how the offensive line played, but again, like once anybody who's gone out to that tackle spot, you decided to lower the price and go over. How do you feel about how they did there and how the line did? You know, um, not good enough in spots, you know, to be quite honest with you. I know Bryce can play better, you know. Um, there were a couple of repeated looks that we, um, 
you know, did not execute well on that side of the line of scrimmage. And, you know, this, we expect more out of him. And, you know, he's, he's not very happy with his performance. And, and, uh, but uh, he's got to get better in that respect. I mean, he's a guy we're counting on. You know, we can't lose a, lose a beat with him in the game. And he knows that. So he has to really lock into his preparation this week and, and see if he can execute better. Uh, I know you said that their defense is a lot different from last year, but their defensive coordinator now was also at Texas when you were there. What do you kind of remember about about his like game life? Uh, if you sit there and try to figure it out, you'll go crazy. I mean, literally, you know, he, he, there's things coming from all over the place. You know, uh, Tyrod Orlando does a very good job. I mean, he he tries to create confusion. You know, um, he's going to pressure you most of the time on base downs, try to get you in. You know, um, a disadvantaged third down situation for the most part, you know, and try to make you, you know, work the field that way, you know, and I'm sure he's going to try to heat up EJ, um, which means that we, we really have to be on point with um, throwing the ball with timing, you know, selling it down with the run game, uh, moving the pocket from here and there, you know, do those kind of things to make sure that we uh, hold them as honest as, as we possibly can and maybe get a misfit here and there is what we're trying to create. I know we talked about the you know the front seven when, against Navy. But what did you think about your corners kind of eliminating those? You know when they pitch it outside and the didn't seem like they had a lot of you know explosive plays. Navy wise, do so you think your corners did a good job of holding that off as well? Yeah, that was that was that was critical. You know our corners did a good job on the option game and they supported the run really well. They were physical. You know that was really good to see. Um, you know what what Navy did a good job is they, they, they'll lull you to sleep with that stuff and all of a sudden the ball's in the air right. And, um, you know, our safeties got clued into the run game, and, and then all of a sudden there's just an element of surprise. The ball is being thrown down the field on you, you know, and they did a great job of hiding those receivers and, you know, motioning and shifting, and, and next thing you know, you got a guy in, in open field. So uh, we need to get better in that respect, you know, although I am very pleased on how our corner supported the run. That was absolutely what we need to see out of that position. Yeah, so, yeah, Ben Oswake sort of played a lot early, and then he kind of seemed like he slipped down the depth chart a little bit. He was back there. Um, did he – Did he earn, like, yeah, I'm sure he had to earn it, right? He worked his way back to yeah. that spot. Where, where, where is he? Yeah, he's good. You know, I mean, we expect him to play a lot for us. I mean, he, he, he's a starter, and, you know, um, you know when, a, when there's a, a breakdown in the play and, you know, or we see a player that's out there struggling with a certain fit or – you know, a, a certain scheme that's going on, you know, it's our job as coaches to sell them down. Sometimes that's, that happens at a timeout. Sometimes you got to pull them off the field and let them settle down, get their emotions back in check. You know, uh, not quite sure what it was for him, but, uh, you know, we're counting on him. It's not a matter of us losing confidence in Ben Oseka. He's, he's, he's a very good football player. and He's got to play really well against a very good, talented South Florida football team this week. So. Um, no, we just have to sell them down when we pull those guys out. We'll get them back in there. I might have missed it earlier in the season, but SMU was the first time I noticed that Danny was out on the field. Um, that was a change. I don't know when exactly it happened. But what went into him deciding to come down and then he was there again? I think he's, he's really great for EJ. You know, those two spend most of the day together, you know, and they kind of got their own little language and how they, how they communicate and understand each other, and especially – in pressure situations, I mean, I think he's really good for EJ. He's, you know, I'm not very good for EJ. I can be probably too intense or, you know, um, I may get him throwing the ball to the running back maybe too much or something, you know. But, um, you know, no, he's perfect on the sideline, and he, he does a great job of rallying the whole entire offense together in between series to kind of give them a clearer understanding of what he's thinking. You know, so our guys can go out there and anticipate, anticipate the uh, the execution of the offense. Do you know if he had done that much before? Because he was upstairs all week. No, he's been a he's been a box guy for most of his career. You know, but um, you know things weren't going quite the way we wanted them to early in the season. So come on down, Danny. You know, let's see if we can rally this thing in, try something different. What does it say about EJ? How you know he didn't play for a month. Obviously, the game he played, but also just how good he was early in the game, getting easy completions on that opening drive. Yeah, you know, he's just, that's, that's, that's our EJ. You know, he's um, a very good study. You know, he, he kind of knew where there were going to be some holes. And, you know, we had a really good week of practice and we got things timed up in the throw game. You know, I thought our tight ends played very well. And, you know, that was something that was um, executed well in practice, you know. So, you know, 
the one thing about most teams, I'm sure, but you know, I know about this team is when we practice well and EJ is on time in practice, you can almost anticipate that happening in, in the game. And uh, so he gave us a good sense of that in our week of preparation leading up into that game. And, you know, so we were happy to see it come to come to real life. So you're dead last in the country in turnover margin. One thing I, you know, you, you have forced as many fumbles as the opposing team. You both forced 11 fumbles, but they've picked up seven. You've only picked up two. Is there a drill there or something that our guys aren't, guys aren't alert to that? That's yeah, we, yeah, just, just, there is a drill. You know, there, there's a drill for all of that. We, we've worked on that. And, you know, I just think that um, sometimes our eyes, you know, are so engulfed, so, so um, engulfed in just, you know, they're blocking the guy, they're just engaged in that block or trying to get off that block and trying to find the football. And I just think there is a, a many opportunities that we should have had out there that, that, that we didn't take advantage of. And, you know, um, you know, you get in the backfield a little bit more like we did against Navy. I think those opportunities present, present themselves a lot more, you know, but uh, hopefully we'll get better at that piece. How about all the Florida kids, a chance for Friday distraction you got to avoid a little bit or anything like that but I'm sure lots of family mm. yeah we we better not have any distractions we, we can't afford any distractions and, and to be quite honest with you that is a main topic for us is we, we're, we're eliminating distractions and try to get ourselves in a rhythm of winning football games down the home stretch here you know and it starts with South Florida and I'm sure our kids from Florida are gonna have a you know a, a, a a next level of excitement that they're, you know, to go back home and to play in their home state and, and, and rightfully so. And it's, it's great for their families to be there and, you know, and um, see their player, I uh, see their kids play and support them that way. But, you know, um, our job is to try to win a football game, you know, and, and that needs to be the only focus for us. How about the impact of a new start? You know, um, we're excited about it. You know, just put the ball down and let's, let's play, right? You know, uh, that's one thing I can say. We've had some some awkward times. We've played on, you know, off days. We've played in short weeks. And, you know, I can honestly say that, um, you know, you turn the film on, although, you know, we would love the, the end result to be better early. I think our kids were up and ready to play. You know, it's not like we, um, you know, um, look at the time and, you know, we worry about our kids being ready to play or not ready to play given the start of the game. You know, we're a morning practice football team, so I know they'll be up and ready to go. And, uh, you know, again, we're, we're just excited to have this opportunity to play a good South Florida football team and, and see if we can come away with a win. I know you talked about how important this past game was, but how important is it for you guys to finally get a road win, these final two road games? Huge, well? huge. You know, it's, it's the next game on the schedule. You know, and uh, you know um, we're trying to gain momentum here late in the end of the season, and um, um, it just so happens to be on the road. And you know, we need to have the mindset, no matter where the game is played, that you know we believe that we can win a football game. You know, so it's huge. It's huge. I think it would do a lot for our confidence level uh, to get down there and to win away. Uh, I know our our seniors uh, are very excited about that opportunity. You know, uh, we, we haven't done that around here since I've been here, you know, so I'm excited about that opportunity. And, um, you know, but again, you know, uh, when the ball is placed down and, you know, and, they, and that foot hits the ball to start that game off, you know, our intent and our focus has to be on the job that we have to do to give, our, give ourselves a chance. You know, um, it can't be uh, eyes looking at the stadium or, you know, us looking at palm trees or, or anything like that, right? Or even feeling the temperature, that, that, that cannot be a distraction for us. We've got to be laser-like focused on doing our job and playing together and, and see if we can find a way to win us a football game. That's, that's got to be the focus for us. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Coach.